Hey guys, my name's Ryan and I create no BS content that helps you level up fast. And in this video, I'm gonna teach you Premiere Pro in 13 minutes. And at the end of the video, there's gonna be a little bonus section on After Effects. So let's get straight into the video. You can manage all your Adobe apps from Creative Cloud. So open up Creative Cloud, download Premiere Pro, open it up, create a new project, call this whatever you want, hit create. So this is Premiere Pro. Don't be put off by all these windows. It's all gonna make a lot of sense very soon. So we're on the same page, hit window, workspace, editing. And this sets it to the editing workspace. Go back to window, workspace, reset, save layout, and we'll make sure we have the same. Just for context, I'm gonna drag in a piece of footage so you can see what's going on. First of all, most important setting, edit, preferences, auto save. This is probably 20 set to five minutes. Okay, let's just look at the panels quickly. Down here, we've got the timeline panel. This is where you're gonna drag forward and back through your footage. I'm actually gonna drag a video in so it makes more sense. To drag a file in, you can literally just drag from anywhere on your computer, drag it into the timeline. So the timeline down here is where you're gonna scrub forward and back to view your footage. Program window up here is where you view your footage. The project window by here is where you save all your assets and then up here is usually effects controls where you control the effects finally you've got a little toolbar by here which has got all your tools those are the main windows you need to be concerned about we'll go through each one now just so you know each of these windows can be moved around by just simply dragging on them and dropping them wherever you like if this gets confusing go to window workspace reset to save layout and you'll always be back here. So this editing layout is what we'll use. So let's start with the timeline. Press forward and back to drag through your footage. If you click on your footage and then click on effects controls, which should be up here, you get these options to change your footage. If you can't see these options, go to window, effects controls and find the effects controls panel. Position moves the position of your image or video. Scale scales it up and down. For the sake of this video, we're going to make it fit. Here's a quick tip. You can just go clip, video options, set to frame size, and it'll fit automatically. Uniform scale means it scales width and height the same. If we turn that off, you can see it stretches. Control and Z is to undo. Rotation obviously rotates the image. The anchor point is where the image rotates from. Opacity make it brighter or darker. And blend mode we'll cover later. That's the effects controls panel. We'll come back to that later. Now let's go down to our project panel. You can see we've got the project here. We've got two clips. This little icon here means it's a sequence. As you can see, the sequence is where we edit the footage. When you create a sequence from a clip, it's automatically gonna give it the name of that clip. So I would probably click on the name here and then rename this main sequence. If you wanna make folders, they're called bins. You can right click and put images, video, and you can drag your images and video into this folder. Before we look at the tools, let me just explain the tracks here. So above this line, is where the videos go, V1, V2, V3. Make sure it's selected so that you can see it. Below the line, A1, A2, A3, this is where you add the audio. If you need to add a new track, just right click, add track. So we'll start by having one piece of footage on the bottom line. You can scrub through this footage by grabbing the cursor at the top. Now, if you wanna cut the footage, you press C, which is gonna switch to this razor tool. And this is how we make a cut. We then press V to go back to the selection tool to move the cuts. Obviously, if we keep C selected and try and move it, we're just gonna make more cuts. So C and V, you're gonna be hopping between these two quite a lot. Let's drag in another image just for an example. A is the select forward tool. So if I press A, I'm gonna select everything after this clip. Just to give you a better example, let's just cut this clip and put it before this one. Now if I press A here, it's only gonna select everything after that. So if you wanna make a little gap to add something in, you can do. Be careful, because this will also move music tracks. If you really want to just move the single track, hold Shift, and this is gonna to change to one cursor, and then you can move just the one track. B is the ripple edit tool. I never really use this, but you can drag your footage further forward or back and it'll automatically delete the gap. But I usually just stick to cut and selection. The Y tool is the skip tool. So if you've got one clip between two clips and you don't wanna take it out, open it up, find the right bit, move it back, etc. You can just press the Y tool to skip through to the part of the clip that you want without having to readjust. P is the pen tool. You can use this to cut out and mask objects and draw shapes. It's not something I do often in Premiere Pro. Rectangle tool, again, to draw shapes. If you go to window, 
essential graphics panel, you'll be met with this panel on the right. This is where you can change the color of the shapes. H is the hand tool. So if you're zoomed in on your screen, H is the tool that will let you move around on your monitor. I generally keep this to fit. And T is the text tool. You can click anywhere you like while you haven't got anything selected. And you can just start typing to create some text. Down on the right on the essential graphics panel is where you can change your text. However, I like to do text design and animation in After Effects. It's way more intuitive. And to be honest, a lot of titles and things you can add in one click by using a couple of plugins, which is a lot easier and more time efficient. Let's look at some basic animation. If I click on my image and go to effects controls, I press this little stopwatch to add a keyframe. This is the scale keyframe. Keyframe means at this point in time on the timeline, I want you to be, in this case, 100 on the scale parameter. Now if I drag forward a few frames to one second, whatever number I type here, let's go 150, the computer is going to fill in the blanks between and it's going to make this animation, taking it from 1 to 150. If we drag these keyframes out, it's going to slow down the animation or we can just change the number, maybe 110, if you just want a slow zoom on here. I won't go into too much detail, but these keyframes, as you can see, they go from keyframe one to keyframe two at the same speed. This is called a linear animation. If we change these handles, we can change the speed at which they come in. So you can get different kinds of animations. However, that's a bit more advanced for this tutorial. Now let's just drag in some audio so I can show you how to edit audio quickly. I've got an audio track here and I'm just going to literally drag it under my timeline. You can also drag straight into the project window or you can go file, import, doesn't really matter. Either one is fine. Make sure you're in the project window and now you could even create a new bin and call this audio and then you can drag your audio in there to stay organized. Another thing you can do is drag a folder straight into your bin. So I could click favorite SFX, drag it in, and it's already got all my favorite sound effects in. This could be something good to do at the start of the project. If I double click, click on any of these tracks in the gray area, it's gonna open up so I've got more space. As you can see, there is a line here. Let's press play quickly. When my audio is playing, I'm looking at this green line on the side. I never want this going into the red because that means it's clipping. If I want to turn the audio down, I can either drag this line down or I can right click and click audio gain plus or minus however many decibels you want. It's good to aim between minus six and minus 12. If I want to transition the audio in, I can press Control, Shift and D and that's going to add the constant power effect, which is a default effect in Premiere Pro. You can also find this effect by going over to Effects, Constant Power and then dragging the effect onto the clip. To make it longer or shorter, just grab, drag the edge and bring it out or bring it in. There's also a few built-in transitions in Premiere Pro, such as Cross Dissolve. If I drag this between these two clips, it's going to add a dissolve. If I want to change the color of any of my clips, I can go to Window Workspaces and Color. And the basic correction up here is going to give you everything you need to increase the exposure, the color temperature, the saturation, the contrast, highlight shadows, whites and blacks. I'm not going to mess with this clip because it's already fine, but if you need to do color correction, go to this workspace. You can also go into more detail if you're a color expert, but it's beyond the remit of this video. I'm going to drag in a new track here. I'm just going to drag it straight onto my timeline. Now, as you can see, it hasn't automatically fit to the frame size, which can be really annoying. To get this to do this automatically, you can go to Edit, Preferences, Media, and then Default Media Scaling Set to Frame Size. If I drag my video in, it's automatically set to the right frame size. I don't like to use scale because that can adjust the width and height. If you want to add amazing transitions and titles in one click, I recommend one plugin and trust me I've tried loads, Premiere Composer. I'll leave a link to Premiere Composer in the description. You can start free and you can buy extra packs. Let me just show you quickly how this works. Let's go to Windows, Extensions, Premiere Composer. Again, I can drag this panel wherever I like. Now if I go to my starter pack, which is the free pack, I can click on Transitions. I can get zoom in and out, rotate, glitch, things like this. 
So let's just click zoom out transition and click add. Now it'll add the zoom out transition with audio between the two clips. Let's have a look at some other examples. We can get a rotate, a shake and distort, and even a light leap. We might just need to scale this light leak up a little bit, but as you can see, you can even change all the colors on the light leak to get the exact light leak look, light leak look that you're going for. If you want to add text boxes, text presets, shapes, social media icons, there's a ton of extras in here, so I can just click add on the YouTube button, just in case you want to remind people to su subscribe. And all, all of these are fully customizable. I won't go on about this, but check out Premiere Composer, which is linked in the description below. If you want to add sound effects, just go into your sound effects library. I'm dragging in a click. I get my sound effects from Soundstripe, which I'll also leave linked below. I want to add this click sound effect, but there's already sound on the YouTube button. They're linked together, so if I press delete now, it's going to delete both. If I press shift and click the bottom one, now I can just delete the audio. Now, if I drag my click into the next track, I can hear the click there. Obviously, there's tons more features in Premiere Pro, but this should be everything you need to get started. As a bonus, I'm going to show you how to easily move animations from After Effects to Premiere Pro. Let's open up After Effects, create a new project. Here's an expert tip. Make sure you save your project first in After Effects because it doesn't prompt you to. Because if you don't save your project and then it crashes, you're not getting it back. I'll save it in the Premiere Pro in 5 minutes folder. That might have been optimistic. So this isn't a full blown After Effects tutorial. If you do want to check out my After Effects courses, I have tons of courses on Skillshare, which you can find in the link below this video. Let's just make a new composition quickly. I really don't care what size it is. So I'm just going to make a quick shape transition with a title just as an example for this video. So I'm going to double click on the rectangle tool. I'm going to just change the color here. I'm going to put transition example. This could come in really handy when you're creating YouTube videos and you want to add in an animation for 0.1, 0 0.2, but Premiere Pro obviously is a bit more difficult to use for animations. I'm going to keyframe our transition. I'm going to make my matte layer so that transition is only revealed behind. And now I have my composition. This could be any design or animation you like. To bring this into After Effects, here's a new feature that you can do. Let's just rename this to transition one. I'm going to save the project and then I'm going to literally drag this down to the Premiere Pro icon, go to project and drag it in. And now you can see our transition is in here. I'm going to press Ctrl and B and call this linked comps. And now I'm going to drag all my linked comps in here. So let's go back to this initial transition. It doesn't render out the black from After Effects. So it's a transparent background, so it works. We're going to go to the end of the transition and I'm just going to make a cut here because we don't need this to be too long. We just want to make sure the footage we want to transition between is completely covered while it transitions. Now let's delete the next transitions and I'll show you how to duplicate this. So all we're going to do is go to project duplicate and you can see we've got transition two. And now we can just grab transition two and drag that into the linked comps. As you can see, this comp is 17 seconds long. If you double click any image or video, you can scrub through here. Now, if I press I, I can select an in point and I go all the way to the end of the transition. I can press O and select an out point. Now I can either click the window to drag this in and out point on, or I can click the video to drag the video only, or if there was audio, I could drag the audio only. To give you a better example, let's just look at one of these videos. So you can see the clip is six seconds long. Maybe I don't want to mess about with it on the timeline. We could go two seconds in, press I, another two seconds, press O, drag it onto the timeline. So there we go. I would say that is enough to arm you with everything you need in Premiere Pro. Remember that you don't need to use all the features and it really is a simple software. It's very good when you get used to it. Let me know if you enjoyed this video, subscribe if you want more tips, hit the Skillshare link in the description if you want to get access to my to all of my video ad editing courses. I know there's been changes to Skillshare, so if that link isn't there anymore, I'll leave a link to my website, whatever needs to be done, if because they've cut the royalties a lot for teachers. I'll also leave links to Soundstripe, 
Premiere Pro, Envato Elements, and if you use any of those links, it'll support me at no extra cost to you. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next video.